I love you, and I am so glad you're here. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast for Thursday, September 28th. Thanks so much for stopping back by. We are going to continue to pick apart some of the high timeline sides of the September Equinox chart, which was Saturday afternoon. We were a little late to the party because last week was a busy week, too. So we're going to catch up on that here for the final episode on this today. First of all, one little tiny thing going on over our heads, which isn't a tiny thing if you are especially an Aries. The moon is returning back to your sign tonight at 8.17 p.m. Eastern Time. The void, of course, on that starts at 4.57 p.m. Eastern, about three and a half hours long. Now, and that's it. So now we're going to jump back into this September equinox chart that we've been talking about for the last couple of days. We started this conversation on Tuesday looking purely at some of the shadowy sides of this. And then yesterday we pivoted to take a look at one of the positive aspects that I think here could be used for highest timeline living. Let's talk about another one. We're not going to retrace those tracks. So if you didn't hear those two, you might want to check those out before we continue on. But here is another really cool, positive high timeline side of this chart. Venus is at 18 degrees Leo, and where I am when I cast the chart for 2.50 a.m. Eastern Time, September 23rd, Venus is also in the first house. And it's in a great big series of trines to Chiron directly at 18 degrees, exact. That's an exact trine. Midheaven and the North Node. So I'm looking at this thinking, wow, this is a great time to put yourself out there. And then I just had the thought to check the Sabian symbols. I don't do that so often, but boy, look at this. And this is from SabianSymbols.com. Is it time for you to employ new strategies, new solutions, new quote-unquote cures for problems? Is it time for you to go out on a limb and see what you are capable of? This symbol implies situations of being willing to try something new and different, to step outside of the square. <laughs> I can feel the excitement. Like some of you already know exactly what that would be if you just had the little shove to do it. Well, here's your shove. It started on Saturday. You have until December 21st. Go. <laughs> Boy, there's one for the you can't make this up department. But contrasting it to what we said the other day, don't go chunking permanent employment right now quite yet for something that is unproven. But what this is saying is definitely start making pitches to the universe, start taking steps towards, start roaring. Go out like I say Mufasa, go out like Mufasa on the rock and go, rah, rah, I'm going to do this. Right. And then just watch the alignments and the synchronicities as they start to help support you around that. So you have the square up to Jupiter and Uranus that we talked about on Tuesday. That's part of it going from Venus. But the other part is this, and this is a shift in career, perhaps. Those of you that have been looking to do this, don't put it on the shelf. Don't pack that in ice, but start taking steps toward it. And maybe it becomes one of those second income streams, mailbox money, or what do they call it? Side hustle now. That's the deal. Side hustle before it becomes primary. And then even if it does become primary, what you should have are multiple streams of income. That's the best scenario if you can get there. Now, if you have the September equinox chart up and the dates on there, the time on that is 2.50 a.m. back on Saturday the 23rd, you almost see a kite. Not quite. But what would be the top part of that kite is Pluto is in a trine to Uranus. And then that trine is in, so both those planets are in sextiles to Neptune. We're just missing one connection on this, but we would have had one. But look, we can go with this. So a trine between Pluto and Uranus. And you know the irony of this is it's an Earth trine <laughs> between Pluto and Uranus. Like, okay, let's shake it up. No, let's don't. No, 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 no. Uranus is in retrograde. No, let's really don't shake it up. Taurus is saying, hold your ground. Pluto and Capricorn saying, stay right here. But this is an element of shaking stuff up for good. Somebody told me in a reading this week, she knew that she couldn't move forward in a given area until she cleared out the past from it. And this is exactly what that's about. And then Neptune, which we talked about on Tuesday, is opposite the sun, is in sextiles to Uranus and Pluto. So Neptune is working with this little plan. 
I have a hope, and I hope this is not buried and steeped in Neptunian fog and delusion, but I just have a hope that so much of the truth that has been buried in our culture, and this is across country borders, I'm talking about the whole world, I just hope that there's this truth factor where the deception scales keep falling off. And I, one thing I do know, it's so bad that if it all happened at once, we would be too shocked. But I do hope that the peeling the layers of the onion keep happening. And maybe that's what this is part of as well. So as these various revelations and insights keep coming out, hopefully we as a culture know what to do with the truth. Hey, be sure to check out our shop. You can get coffee mugs on sale this week. Spiritualdesigns11.etsy.com I love you guys. We'll set up the weekend tomorrow. Merriman on Saturday. Level up Sunday night. we got a lot going on. Have a great day.